Good morning. We're here for the one year Bible study. And um, just to let y'all know, my mom continues to get stronger and stronger. And she and I continue to talk about um, how strong the attack has been on her. I mean, my goodness, she's had a uh, kidney infection. She had sepsis. She had blood clot in her lung. She had cirrhosis of the liver. Um, those are the things I can think of right now. And um, my mom's in her 70s, and she has COPD. Um, so she has uh, declined lung function. And so anyway, she's got diabetes, and it takes – it often takes or has in the past taken her body uh, a long time to recover from things like this. And I'm telling you guys, I, there's a couple of things that we contributed to. First and foremost, the power of prayer. I mean, I don't hesitate to come to you guys and ask you guys to pray. And I know that I know, God bless you, that the power of prayer is beyond anything. I mean, I really... You know, God's really got my attention in the last few years that will say, well, I don't know what else I can do. I can pray. That's the wrong attitude. The very, very best thing we can do is pray. And the very, very best thing you guys have done is prayed for my mom. And the power of prayer has been so evident. She also takes some very powerful, strong nutritional supplements that I think um, uh, has really helped her called Plexus. And I just those two things combined is just such a blessing in her life. And she has, um, <laughs> hi, Lisa May. I love you so much. So glad you could join and praying that shot helps you sister. Um, thank you for praying for my mama, but I just can't thank y'all enough. But mom and I've talked about, she had sepsis with a, a kidney infection four or five years ago. And I mean to tell you, it took, forever for her to get her strength back it was just a long drawn out process um she was near death back then as well and it, you know it just i'm i'm in awe of her recovery i'm in awe of how her strength is coming back how her mind function has stayed good um that's one of the things that that um blood poisoning did to her before is it impacted her mind impacted her memory uh, to a degree, and we haven't experienced any of that this time. I mean, power of prayer, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much <clears throat> that she realizes and knows that healing lives on the inside of her. She didn't have to wait for the healing. Healing lives on the inside of my mom, just as he lives on the inside of each one of you. We are healed. That healing's already been provided, and my mom's walking in that. God's not finished with her yet. So he's not finished with you yet. And it leads me to August the 30th, Job chapters 34 through 36. Job continues to be plagued by these physical ailments, things that none of us, is, as, as much as we hurt, as much as we've been attacked in our physical body, as much as uh, we're in misery, we haven't experienced anything like what Job experienced. And then here comes his friends um, to comfort him and to try to help him and try to get him up. And they end up <laughs> just saying horrible things to him. And this, and this is where we find ourselves in today's reading. And um, I was just thinking about the intimacy of friends sitting together, friends coming together, how, how we do, you know, um, we're going through a bad time. I, I love the analogy of Moses and the picture that God gave us through the historical text of Moses that when God told him that he would win the battle and that they were to fight, uh, Moses stood up and, and raised his arms. And as he raised his arms, the battle's raging in the valley below him and uh, they're winning, his men's winning. But when his arms got tired and as his, arms came down because you can only keep your arms up physically for so long then as his arms came down then that then his men were losing they were losing the battle and so Aaron and another man came alongside Moses and held his arms up for him 
what a picture of what God wants us to do for each other, that when I can't pray, you'll pray for me. When I can't hold my arms up, you'll hold my arms up. I've got people like uh, Janice that's on here, my dear sister, Allie. Uh, Allie, I love you so much. I miss you. I miss you, Janice. I, I'm, we have people like this, Heather. I love you, Heather. Um, we come alongside each other. And we hold our arms up for each other. We, we're the strength for our friends when we don't have strength on our own. And here, here Job is. He, he's ready to die. He's ready to toss in the towel. And um, his friends come along. And in this particular case, rather than helping him, they drag him down. And I just pray, Lord, you know, that because we are spirit-led in what we say and do with our friends, that that's not what we do for one another. We are the strength that holds up our arms. We are the voice that'll pray when we can't pray. And we are the encouragement that tells us to never, ever, ever give up. And so I say all that to come back to, I had an opportunity yesterday to sit down with a dear, dear, dear friend of mine. It's a, a new friend that just in the last year, God has brought to me in a powerful way, uh, in a very spiritual, we talked about deep things of the spirit yesterday. And uh, she and I talked and she's, um, a missionary and she just just this past week got back from Malawi and while she was on this mission trip she just almost died I mean the enemy attacked her physical body and her husband spoke of holding her in his arms and and just saying Lord if you take her I'll still praise you that that they she was so close to death that both she and he um, really really believed that she it was her last breath she was taking and um, Anyway, she was sharing with me how before she ever left on this trip that God gave her a scripture in Thessalonians that said, um, no matter what, praise me. I, I mean, that's my paraphrase. I, I didn't look up the scripture to give it to you, but she, she quoted the scripture for me and how she knew that God had told her that that was the scripture she was to stand on for her trip. Um, that he was sending her on and and it was that in all things give him praise in all things give him praise and I just um, thought about that today I mean I had that conversation with my friend yesterday my friend who will come alongside me hold my arms up when I can't raise them uh, will pray for me when I can't pray for myself many of you are like that for me um, Leanne's that way, Lynn's that way. Lynn and I have prayed through several things together. Becca and I have have prayed through many, many, many uh, a struggle. Um, anyway, so just yesterday I got to sit and have this conversation and she was talking about how God prepared her in advance for this fight for her life and that he told her that in all things to give him praise. And then I'm reading about how Job's friends missed the mark, how they didn't comfort him, how they didn't say the right things. And I, I just had this thought today. Um, what if, what if the only words Job ever spoke was praise in this struggle? What if the only thing that his friends had said was words of praise? What if, I mean, I, I just feel like that's what this Bible does for me every day when I read it. You know, when I read it, every single day, it's words of life for me for that day. And, and so between my friend yesterday and the reading today, I'm being reminded again that in all things, give thanks. In all things, praise him. It doesn't say only in the good times. In fact, it's in the good times, guys, that I think we we make our exodus away from the Lord in good things, in good times. When things are going well, when everything's great, we have a tendency to stop our thanks, to stop our counting the blessings, to stop our pleading with God, to stop our crying out to him. We, we have a tendency to just want to settle back and oh, things are good and life's good and and, and in all things, give thanks. In all things, praise him. And my friend talked about how when the pain would come, and she said, we're talking about pain that was an 11 plus on a scale of 1 to 10, that 
the most excruciating pain she'd ever experienced, far worse than childbirth, in that when she would praise him in those moments when the pain would come, that instantly the pain would, would relax, that the pain would be much, much less just by praising him, and that God had given her what he needed from her, what he wanted from her, what he expected from her prior to the onset of the attack. Wow. Wow. And, you know, when things aren't looking good, when, when the reports come back and they aren't what we want them to be, do we praise him? When the checkbook doesn't look the way we want it to look, do we praise him? When we don't think there's enough to make ends meet, when our neighbors not act in the way we think they ought to act, when our pastor lets us down, when our church people, our church family aren't what we thought they should be. Do we praise them? Do we praise him? Do, when the report isn't what we, when, when the doctor doesn't tell us what we want to hear, do we praise him? Or, I mean, when that report comes in from the doctor, our, our natural tendency is fear. Fear is the first thing. When he tells us praise ought to be our first thing. Praise him in all things. In all areas of our life, give thanks. Give thanks. And I, it was just combination of, this is how this works, though. See, combination of my wonderful visit with my friend yesterday, the encouragement I got from her, um, and then picking up my Bible today and reading, and reading about the interaction of Job and his friends, and just to check in my spirit, Elizabeth, are you giving thanks? I, I am praising God from the hilltops for my mom. Um, God is doing some things behind the scenes through this sickness that my mom's had that I'm not at liberty to share publicly, but I mean, there's miracles taking place that are so visible in my family. We have a family member we've been praying for, and through the sickness of my mother, wonderful things are happening. Miracles are happening. Um, just, just the fact I was talking to my mom this morning on the phone and my mom made a 13 hour trip in the car and she didn't stop and walk. And, you know, the doctors have said very likely it's because of that, that thing right there is that she got the blood clot that she didn't get her, get out, exercise her body, um, get the circulation pump in the way it should that caused a blood clot in my mom's lungs that could have t instantly taken her life, instantly could have taken her life. And I've told my mom, I said, you know, we all know we're supposed to get out and walk. We all know we're supposed to rest. But how many of us have ever had it? Just this, oh, I got to go. I, <coughs> excuse me. My mom was on a mission. She had a reason to be where she needed to be in 13 hours and and she said, let's go. And she went and she didn't rest and she didn't get out and walk. And, and I told her, I said, you know, God works all things for the good. And we're all going to be reminded to get out, stop, rest your legs, walk your legs, stretch. Um, and because this happened to my mom, who is so loved in our whole family, generations will have a greater awareness of the truth of what we're supposed to do than we would have had this not happened. So I'm praising him for that. I'm thanking him for that. I'm, I'm thanking him that in my 70s, when I make my trips, when I'm traveling to see my grandbabies and my great grandbabies, that I'll know to stop. I, I need to do it now. Do, do you see how God uses all things for good? It wasn't good that my mom came under this attack, but God is using it for good in ways I can't even talk about and in the ways I can talk about. And we've yet to see all the good. I mean, just how my mom's miraculous recovery is taking place is giving God glory. I mean, it's, it's all to his glory. It's all for him, which then brings me to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. Um, you know, he's been encouraging us in the last few days, telling us that um, he has a purpose for all of us, that it's that we are him on this earth, that it's his light that shines through us. You know, that we are the, the, the letter of recommendation from Christ, that our, our life yesterday, he says in the, in the Corinthians to us, that our 
our life and the way we live it is the letter, the written letter of recommendation to the whole world on why they need Christ in their life, why they need to recognize the Christ that lives inside of all of us. Um, that, that our life is that living letter. As he is in this world, so are we. You all have somebody that's watching you. There are people watching you every single day to see how you live your life. There are people living that are watching my mom and, and seeing how my mom comes through this crisis in her life. There, there are people that was watching my friend in her. In fact, she had people that came to her hut where she was uh, so, so sick. And, and I mean, and she even went to the hospital in Africa and she explained to me that in Africa, you don't go to the hospital to get well, you go to the hospital to die. They, they don't treat you in the hospital in Africa to help you get better. They, they let you die in the hospital. And she went to the hospital and she had people come by the hospital and told her these words. And she had somebody come by twice in her hut before she went and after she went to the hospital that said, we're all watching you. We're all, the whole village is watching you to see how you are walking out this illness, how you are walking out this near death experience. And you know what? She already had her answer. She, before she ever left to go on that trip, God said, praise me in all things. And that's what that woman did. And that's what they saw in her is that a woman that was near death in excruciating pain was praising him. And so in today's reading, it goes on to, to remind us again that we have a ministry. Uh, we are the living letter of Christ to the world. We, we are the only Christ they see so often. And, and, but we have renounced disgraceful and underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, because he talked about the veil yesterday, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. We're not perishing. We never die. We don't have to fear death. I will never die in Christ. In their case, the God of this world, small g, <clears throat> has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is, who is see, he's talking about us. Now, I want you to get this. Let me get this off my screen. I want you to get this. <clears throat> Oh, you doubters. Oh, you who say, well, God could never use me. Oh, nobody would listen to me. Oh, I can't make an impact on anybody's life. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too used. I'm too, I'm, I'm too broken. I'm too depressed. I'm too unskilled. I don't have enough experience. I don't have enough education. That's who I'm speaking to. All of you who say, oh, no, not me. I don't have a ministry. He, this is what he says to you. God says to you, <clears throat> to keep them from seeing you, the light of the gospel of the glory of God. You are the glory of God. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and said to that person staring back at you, you are the glory of God. When, when people see you, they see God's glory. Now I'm telling you, I'm preaching to myself. I have never done that. I've never looked in the mirror and looked myself in the eyes and said, you are the glory of God. That's what he just said to us. It's written down in writing that you, the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Reinforcing what he told us yesterday and the day before. For what we proclaim is not ourselves. See, it's why I keep telling you guys this, 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 Video is not about Elizabeth. It, it doesn't matter if I'm on here every day or I'm not on here every day. That's been the lie of the enemy to tell me, oh, if you're not consistent, people won't watch. If you're not on here every, if you don't have a set time every single day, Elizabeth, people won't watch it. And you know, if I'm doing that, then I'm making it, I'm proclaiming myself. It's not about me. This is about your your reading his word, you being in the word every day, you taking it on yourself 
to read God's word, to know him, to get to know him, to be intimate with him, to have a true relationship with him so that you proclaim him in your life. A living letter for Christ, not a living letter for Elizabeth. It's not about Elizabeth. It never has been. It never will be. Don't make it about me. You're not following me. We are followers of Jesus Christ, and we proclaim not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. It's very clear. We don't do ministry for ministry's sake. We don't do ministry to say we have a ministry. We don't do ministry to make ourselves feel good. We don't do ministry to heal our brokenness. We do ministry because it's who we are, and we are him on this earth. We are representatives, the living letter of Christ. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. How plain it is. It's him. It always has been. It always will be. It's not about you. And it's not about me. Never has been. Never will be. We were created for him. There is a reason you were born on the day of your birth in the 21st century. And it was for him to proclaim his glory. That when you walk the face of the earth, they look and they see his glory, his light shining on you, not by the word you speak, not by how many videos you make, not by getting up on the mountain time and mountaintop and preaching to the nations. Some of us are called, Pastor Charles J are called to do that. But it's just simply we are the living letter of the living Christ to all, to all. We are afflicted. Now, now get this. This is going, these next words are going to describe many of you where you're at today. And the, the words I'm getting ready to speak, when you read my Facebook posts, when you're sitting around listening to me, Elizabeth speak, when you hear me talk about my life, and I say these words a million times a year, never, ever give up. These words is what helped Elizabeth in the pits of hell, in the bad decisions of her life she created, the hell she created in her life, to say the words, never, ever give up. These words, these words are life-changing. These words are going to describe where you've been, and it's going to give you the words to speak, never, ever give up that your hope is in the living Christ that lives on the inside of each one of you. Not in the hope in the Jesus Christ that lives inside of Elizabeth. Oh, he's alive in me. I am a living, walking, breathing testimony. But it is in the living Christ, the hope of glory that lives on the inside of each one of you. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body of the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. Though they slay me, yet I'll praise you. So that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. It don't get any better than that. Never, ever give up. I love you.